Okay, so the second video on circles here, back up. I'm just going to rewrite the distance formula from the bottom of the last video. Um, just to remind you what it is. D equals square root of the quantity y2 minus y1 squared plus the quantity x2 minus x1 squared. Okay, so here's an example. Find the distance between the points. The typical example, why, what a, you know, the common thing to use a distance formula for. So you're given those two points. So now remember, you want to subtract the x-coordinate from the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate from the y-coordinate. You square each one of the results of those, then take, take them and add them together and do the square root of the whole thing. So it looks like this. Okay. So I took the second point here. You could, it doesn't matter which one you call the first or which one you call the second point. The distance between them is the same regardless. So I just took five minus three, or sorry, negative five minus three, that's negative eight. And then two minus a negative one. You have to be careful with negatives. Two minus a negative one is two plus one, right? And then I just square these. And of course, this is negative eight, but the negative squares out. So that's just 64 and that's nine. Okay, so I get, I wrote it an extra step. <laughs> 64 plus nine, so that's gonna be what, 73? And 73 doesn't factor, so it's a prime number, I believe. Yeah, it's a prime number, so um, I know that doesn't simplify. So the distance is square root of 73. That's the exact answer. If they want an estimate, of course, in your homework or on tests, if I want an estimate, I have to tell you how many decimal places to give it to. Otherwise, just leave it like that, square root of 73. Uh, there's something that I left off of here that I should mention that is used sometimes in these problems. And that's the midpoint of two points. So if you have two points, uh, let me just write this out real quick. Say you have two points. Say we have this point here, and we have this point here, and we wanna find the point halfway between them, right around there. How do you find the point halfway between two points? Well, how do you find the number halfway between two numbers? You average them. That's what the average is of two numbers, a number halfway between. So how do you find the midpoint here? Well, if you think about it, right, you got this kind of thing going on. So if you average the two x coordinates of these two points, then you get halfway between them. And if you average the two y coordinates uh, here, sorry. so average the two x coordinates, you get halfway between them, that x coordinate, which is the x coordinate of the midpoint. If you average the two y coordinates of these two points, right, then you get halfway between them, which is the y coordinate of the center. So all you do to find the midpoint is you just average the x coordinates of the two points, make that the x, that'll be the x coordinate of your midpoint, and average the y coordinate. So remember how to average, you just add the numbers and divide by two. That works even if they're negative. You just add the negative. Okay, so here you're adding the numbers and dividing by two, and you get the first coordinate and the second coordinate. Add the first coordinates divide by two, add the second coordinate, divide by two. So that does come up, and for some reason I left it off of the main notes here, so I thought I'd throw that in. It's an extra bonus for those who watch the video, like you're supposed to. <laughs> okay, converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, the text doesn't mention this, a lot of texts don't. They pretend that the Pythagorean theorem is the same as its converse. What does converse mean? It means backwards. You're looking at it backwards. So Pythagorean theorem says that if you have a right triangle, then, and you take the lengths of the two legs and square them and then add those together, 
you'll get the square of the length of the hypotenuse. The converse says if you have a triangle where the sum of the squares of the lengths of two sides equals the square of the length of the third side, then that triangle is a right triangle. You see the difference? And one, you start with a right triangle, end up with a relationship between the lengths of the sides. The other one, you have a, start with a relationship between the lengths of the sides of a triangle. And, and the, the conclusion is that it's a right triangle. So they use this in this textbook and acts like they're the same thing. It turns out that those, if one is true, then the other is true. But that's not the case for all mathematical theorems. So we have, we're supposed to be careful about this kind of thing. So the converse of the Pythagorean theorem says, uh, well, this is the way I decided to word it. Designate the lengths of the three sides of a triangle by A, B, C. If A squared plus B squared equals C squared, then the triangle is a right triangle. Now notice that if you're going to do this and you want A and B to be the legs, then C has to be the longest one. Hypotenuse is always the longest. So if it is a right triangle, which is what you're trying to show here, then you would want to use the largest number they give you for C. Okay, and then the sum of the squares of the other two should be the square of the largest. So here's a common example. This is actually the first uh, commonly known right triangle. <laughs> and probably where they got the idea for Pythagorean theorem from long before Pythagoras. Now this is a three, four, five triangle. And it says determine whether this is a right triangle. So notice five is the largest of the three numbers. So that's gonna be my C and A and B are gonna be four and three. So I just take the square of four, which is 16, take the square of three, which is nine, add them together and see if I get the square of five, which I do, right? That's 25, voila, see? That's a square of five. So that is a right triangle. Where's the right angle? It's between the two shorter sides. The largest angle is always opposite the largest side. The smallest angle is always opposite the smallest side, medium angle the opposite the medium side, okay? So if it said determine whether this is a right triangle, your answer would be uh, yes, okay?